that's a show off. Unless what they're showing off is dope as These videos are not for children. If you're a children, then piss off. Hey there, it's me, your least favorite YouTuber, V Infuso. Talking about your least favorite superhero, Peacemaker. If you would have told me a few years back that the first DC character to go from the movies to getting their own TV show would be Peacemaker, I would have asked, who the fuck is Peacemaker? I think it's safe to say that the only reason this show actually exists is because John Cena is the one playing Peacemaker. That's not an insult by any means. Just the opposite. John Cena was one of the most charismatic men to enter a wrestling ring. And he's now one of the most charismatic men in Hollywood. The guy has a personality the size of his muscles. That is to say that there's way too much of it, and it absolutely can't be natural. I'm kidding, of course. You know, I can specifically remember a time back in 2008. I was hanging out in my basement with Joe Dice of GTS, before he was Joe Dice of GTS, and we were watching a bunch of shorts Cena created for WWE.com. He did this weekly segment called Five Questions with the Champ. And he was just so relentlessly funny and fun to watch. So much so that I turned to Dice, who has always loved John Cena, and said, so much so that I turned to Dice, who has always loved John Cena, and said, you know, I just really wish John Cena would stop wrestling and start acting. Because even during the times that I didn't necessarily like him as a wrestler, I still really liked him as a performer. John Cena is a constant entertainer, which is a big part of the reason that he got as far as he did in sports entertainment. Very few people could take a character as ridiculously flawed and unknowingly awful as Peacemaker and make you kinda wanna root for them. The reason he's so likable is because he's obnoxiously oblivious to the terrible things that he's doing. He lacks all kinds of self-awareness. And yet, no matter how accidentally awful he acts, he still thinks that he's a man of moral. He's like Michael Scott with muscles. This show really manages to endear audiences to the character. Much, much more than the Suicide Squad did. I like that they show that he does in fact have remorse for his terrible actions, and that he's only done what he's done because he falsely believed he was doing the right thing. Which I think is something a lot of people can relate to. You know, how many times have you thought you were doing something good, and then months to years later you look back on it and you're like, Oh, oh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm the dick there. He was acting out in the name of righteousness, never realizing that he was being the very thing that he sought to stop. I love it. Even if it's played for laughs, this is still a really good development. It's not necessarily an evolution of the character, per se. It's more of a revelation for the audience learning more about the duality of this person and just exactly how his imperfect mind works. His strange existence only makes that much more sense when we see where he was raised and who he was raised by. This poor little nutcase never had a chance. His upcoming was always going to breed, at the very least, social confusion and a skewed sense of morality. The occasional good that shines through with this character is a testament to how good he is at his core. Despite himself, he is the star of the show. Not just in the fact that he's the titular character, but in terms of being the best character. Which, by the way, is not always the case. Just look at how I met your mother. You think people were watching that for Ted? No. Absolutely not. He is the best performance in the show. Which is saying quite a bit considering how many great performances there are in the series. In the show, we find out that Peacemaker actually has an animal sidekick in an eagle very creatively named Eagly. I kind of got to give the show credit here because this is some really good animation. HBO Max does not skimp on the budget. This is an all-CGI character, which makes sense as James Gunn just can't fucking help himself. You know, you gotta include one in every movie, and now TV show too, apparently. But this bird has spunk, and it's adorable, and seriously, this is frighteningly good CGI. It's Always Sunny recently had an episode that included a CGI monkey, and the CGI looked really good until it started moving around, and it came off as very stiff and unnatural. But Eagly's movements are completely realistic. There's some scenes where it seems like it's just a really, really well-trained eagle. Get yeah, out, trained an eagle, dude. Not without stealing its soul. Peacemaker also has a person sidekick, and he's an equally, if not more oblivious wannabe superhero named Vigilante. I think this character exists not only for the laughs to be had at their expense, 
but also to create a visual compare and contrast between him and Peacemaker. He represents the person Peacemaker used to be, while Peacemaker today has changed significantly since the events of the Suicide Squad, and he's questioning a lot of his past ways. Vigilante is a physical conflict to that, as he idolizes the person Peacemaker used to be, and his involvement in his life today seems to pull him back into making impulsive, immature decisions that usually glorify violence. But in a much less analytical take, he's funny and he has good chemistry with John Cena. Peacemaker's father is just about every terrible thing you could think a person could be. He's old school and ignorant, uh, by which I mean he's racist and homophobic. And not even in the whole, I don't get this lifestyle type of way, in the very blatant, hateful type of way. He's a I despise and loathe them because they're not the same as me type of guy. You know, th this isn't the look both ways before he says the n-word type of racist. This is the I'm gonna walk up straight to your face and get in your face when I say it type. Guy's one scary mother <laughs> And it doesn't help matters that he's being played by the T-1000. Robert Patrick could grow to be 112 years old and he would still be a nightmare walking amongst men. Guy's 63 now, and if he looked in my direction, I think instinctively I would have to look away. And I'm not a passive man, but I ain't taking chances I don't need to be taken. Leota is so perfectly awkward, and she acts less like a fish out of water, and more like a fish out of water sent onto a frying pan. The character is about as out of her element at her job as the actress is completely in her element on the show. She's the new girl on the team. And what makes matters even worse for her is that she's the weird new girl. No, not that one. Come, come on, editing V. You know that's not what I meant. You may wonder what she's doing being attached to this team, as it doesn't seem like she carries the same set of skills as everyone else on it. And that's because nepotism, as she's Amanda Waller's daughter. A plot twist I didn't see coming. And neither will the rest of the cast of characters, because she doesn't tell anybody. So it looks like Peacemaker isn't the only one with some parental issues. Something I imagine that will be touched on relatively soon. Then you have Harcourt, who's pretty much the straight man in all of this madness. She's very clearly the Alice in Alice in Wonderland here. In the sense that everyone else is batshit crazy, but she herself seems to be the most reasonable one. She's almost always the smartest person in the room. And you can't tell if that's because she's genuinely incredibly intelligent, or it's just the fact that she's surrounded by idiots. Oh, come on, man, don't use the I word, it's not cool. We don't get to learn a whole lot about her character, but what we do get to know is enough to make us want to know more. Similarly, we get Clemson Mum, who honestly kind of serves the same purpose, although we do get a little bit more of his backstory, and he is also a frightening dude. The way he conducts himself and the way that his past is talked up, and also considering where he's stationed in this task force, kind of seems like it makes him the male equivalent of Viola Davis' character. It's like you got a man Waller over here. But again, this is only three episodes in, and we don't get a whole lot of time with the character or information on him. So that could change relatively soon. And then you have Beard Die, whose plight I definitely sympathize with. Because that's right, guys. I too dye my beard. This big, burly, black beard? Ain't natural. I'm actually a beard brunette. Maybe even a little bit ginger which I know is definitely going to upset some of you as it's yet another case of a ginger being scrubbed from existence. Oh, these fucking woke agendas, man. There's also a whole slew of other characters, including the janitor, the neighbor, the chick peacemaker and vigilante, the husband of the chick peacemaker and vigilante, judo master. But as of right now, we haven't been given a whole lot of time with them. So making a comment past saying that they exist would be a little bit hard for me to do. Although the janitor, his first back and forth with Peacemaker was fucking hilarious. And I'd really like it if we get to see him used more. Just give me like a buddy cop episode with these two and I'm, I'm set. I'm there. I like that the show is taking its time setting up and developing the dynamics between these characters. We're now three episodes in and we still haven't seen all the characters in the show's intro interact with one another. Some we've only seen show up for one scene. This is a show that exists in its continuity, but isn't shackled down by that continuity. There are plenty of references to other characters in the DCEU, and references made to past events in the DCEU. But Peacemaker is so far removed from everything else going on in this giant universe, that it doesn't have to tack on whatever the latest events of this world are. 
And if it does, it's doing it somewhere in the background where it makes sense. You know, we'll, we'll talk about Aquaman, but we don't need to cut in with a Jason Momoa cameo that adds nothing to the overall plot. It never feels like the show goes out of its way to reference things. The Easter eggs are brought up naturally, li like in passing, and I very much appreciate that. It makes this feel tied into everything else, but it doesn't go out of its way to explain exactly where it's tied into everything else, nor should it. This show has one of the most hilariously bizarre intros I've ever seen in a show. Just a bunch of all different types of people doing a TikTok dance, stone-faced. James Gunn, you... You did it again, you fuck you. What I find really weird about this is that there's people out there who have written this off entirely. The common complaint seems to be, Oh, this is basically just another Marvel show. And that statement just proves to me that there are people out there who have no actual earthly idea what the fuck it is they're talking about. John Cena f***s a scene queen hair metal looking metahuman in the first episode. The T-1000 is out here spurting out racial slurs in that same episode. This is literally nothing like a Marvel show. Yeah, you remember that one time that Tony Stark banged a mutant while Captain America went off about the good old days? No, you don't, because it never fucking happened. The comparison that's being made is being made because like some MCU films, this show is fun. And I'm sorry. Like, truly, I I'm sorry that this show isn't as bleak and miserable as your parents have made you. This is coming from someone who prefers DC to Marvel, and someone who likes darker toned stories. There is nothing wrong with having darkness coexist with Goofy. Dark comedies are a thing. This show is just that. They're facing serious threats. They touch on real world issues. This whole show and the events of the show are very dark in nature, but the people involved in these tragic, traumatic stories are absolute goofs. Once again, that's why I love this. All of these people, despite being mostly well-qualified for their jobs, are shown to be very inept in some form or fashion. Which is also a point of contention with detractors from the show. But real talk here, I think it's a really good display of real life. Be honest here. Over the years, whether it be someone in your own personal life or celebrity that you've seen on TV, wasn't there someone you thought had their shit together? And then you found out down the line you were not only mistaken, but you were gravely mistaken in thinking that? I know I have. When I was a kid, almost every adult seemed like they knew what they were doing. But then as I got older, I realized, holy shit, these people don't know what the fuck is going on. Absolutely nobody knows what it is they're doing, from one minute to the next. We're all just a bunch of chickens running around with their heads cut off. This show is incredibly stupid. In the best ways. It is one of my favorite things I've seen done in the DCEU. And I like that it finds a way to coexist with the dark broodiness of this universe. Like it stands out because of how different it is, but it doesn't feel so different that it's entirely out of place. It, it's like the perfect middle ground. I don't know how this man does it, but I have never seen anything bad that had James Gunn's name attached to it. Now granted, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, I'm saying I haven't seen it. I've always been a fan of the DC shows. I actually kinda like the CW-verse. But that's not to say that those shows are perfect by any means. Far from it. These shows are incredibly goofy, but we're supposed to take them seriously. This is what we're supposed to take seriously. Look at that animation. Amazing bulk, eat your heart out. Now Peacemaker, on the other hand, is a show where the threats are serious, but they're played for laughs. Peacemaker is a show that is very aware of just how ridiculous it is. And not only does it never try to hide that, it's constantly calling attention to it. The fact that this show is so unapologetically strange, so ridiculously bizarre, gives me high hope for the future of it. And I maybe jump in the gun here. You see what I, you see what I did there? Because, because James Gun. Anyway, I may be jumping the gun here, as we're only three episodes into the season, but it's because of these reasons that I would say that Peacemaker is currently the best DC show. Right on up there with Superman and Lois. I would tie them for the number one spot. Two very different shows, but two very great shows in their own unique ways. But maybe Superman and Lois is discussion for another day. Being as this is a review following the first three episodes of the first season, I'm gonna need y'all to let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see me follow this up when the show follows this up. 
So if you liked what you heard and you want to hear more, type in the comment section. Peacemaker. What a joke. Anyway, with all that being said, I was your least favorite YouTuber, Vianfuso, and I thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. I am vengeance. I am the knight, and that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So, if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one bad day. Day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel. It's over. <laughs>